<laughs> exactly that. How to install Lutron Sivoya QS Triathlon battery operated with blinds. Well, technically, I'm going to take you through all the steps I use to install my own Lutron with blinds. Which is a bit specific by the way, but we'll discuss this in a minute. We're going to talk about everything. Measurements, the actual fitting of those blinds on the window, how these blinds operate, and how to control and modify the blind settings from a Lutron Pico remote. There'll be a part two of this video where we'll focus on how to integrate those Lutron wood blinds with Lutron Ratu Select and in particular, how to set up that new feature called NLO, which stands for Natural Light Optimization. The link for it will be posted on the comment section below once online. Or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll be notified when that new video is released. Anyway, today's tutorial is for anyone interested in this type of Lutron shading solution or for any professional that need an overview of the full installation process. And if you're only interested on some specific steps, check out the timestamps also in the comment section below to go directly to a specific chapter. So without further ado, let's do it. I'm going to install this new wood blind onto this window in my office, where I currently have a Lutron Triathlon roller blind, also battery operated. The first step I had to take to order this blind was to provide Lutron with the measurements of my window. I choose to have my wood blind to be fitted inside the window at the front of the existing one. So I had to start by taking three width measurements at the top, at the middle and at the bottom of my window. And out of those, I will keep the smaller dimension, which in my case is the button one here. And I also took two measurements for the height at the left and at the right, and also here kept the smaller value. Now, because the maximum size you can have on a Lutron Triathlon wood blind is 182.88 centimeters or 72 inches wide by the same 182.88 cm or 72 inches tall, although here the height is fine, we can see straight away that my window is too wide for one single wood blind. So the only way around was for me to use two separate Lutron wood blinds fitted side by side under a single valence. This setup is simply called two blinds under one valence. And although these are two blinds, the only measurements I've sent to Lutron was the smaller width and the smaller height as I previously measured. But before we go any further, today's video is sponsored by Ace Contracts. Ace Contracts specialize in the supply and installation of motorized blinds and curtains. Based in the UK, this family business has grown to be one of the industry leaders in the high-end residential and commercial market. I've been working with ACE for over 10 years now and I've always been impressed by their attention to details. They can also make and customize in-house most aspects of your windows treatments. And as a lighting control specialist like myself, working with a Lutron shading provider such as ACE or my projects always guarantee the highest finish and client satisfaction. Besides blinds and curtains, they really understand the need of integrators and home automation specialists with regards to wiring, control and integration, which is great. And if you want to know more, check out their contact details in the comment section below. Now, let's go back to our tutorial. My Lutron wood blinds finally arrived. They were both well packaged as usual within a single box. As Venetian, I found them to be quite compact and light with a small drive sitting nicely inside the head box, as it is only used to tilt the slats, more on that later on. I have chosen a red mahogany finish as I thought it would provide a nice contrast to the white and grey theme of my office. Other stained finishes such as light oak, walnut or dark walnut for example are also available as well as other painted finishes as you will see on Neutron brochures and website. By the way, those wireless wood blinds have been provided to me by my good friends at Lutron. So again, thank you very much, guys. Each blind comes with its own box of hardware, where you will find all the mounting screws required, but also the right and the left mounting bracket, both fitted with little doors that will allow for the blinds to slide in and out once the brackets fitted on a window. Very good. 
in my specific case here with my two wood blinds side by side under a single valence I also got this combined right and left mounting bracket similar than the previous ones but attached together which will have to be fitted in the middle between my two blinds finally I got some bracket locks that will have to be fitted on the bracket itself once the blinds in place to avoid the bracket door to open by accident which is very clever I've got some specific ones for the right and the left bracket. Great, now that I've got everything I need, let's install those return blinds. I'm going to start with fitting my right bracket and first, using a pencil, I'll mark the holes I want to drill. I've decided to fit the bracket at the edge of the window as I don't want the valence to be completely flush and give a bit of texture and also to leave space as much as possible between my roller and my wood blinds. Not that it matters, but just in case. Once the holes drilled, I'll fit my plugs and then screw my right mounting bracket. Very good. I'm going to do the same thing on the left hand side to fit my left mounting bracket and then complete the job by fitting the combined right left mounting bracket right on the window center line. I've now finished to install my brackets. Great. <laughs> Lovely jobly as we said in Marseille. Now that I've got my brackets in place, let's install the wood blinds. I prepare the brackets, opening the doors on each of them. And the key now is to pull away the blind from the hedge rail in order to separate the top slat from the hedge rail so it's clear from the mounting bracket. Let's just slide the blind in by inserting the hedge rail into the mounting brackets. Then close each bracket door, pressing it firmly to ensure that the tab at the bottom of the bracket engages through the slot in the bracket door and exactly the same thing for the blind on the left. Again here, making sure to close the bracket doors firmly until they clicks. There we go. Now with the blinds in place, I'm going to remove all the protective tape from the valence brackets and between the slats. Then I'll install the bracket locks, making sure each one goes on their respective bracket, right or left pushing up the head rail as I'm doing here. Now I'll install the batteries which are regular 1.5D type and because of their size I'll need 4 of them per blind. In theory and based on their use, those batteries should last me between 2 to 3 years which is great. The blind will then power up flashing the shade button at the top of the head rail red and green. Those Luchon Triathlon wood blinds must be lowered and raised manually. As Venetians stay most of the time down, this version of battery operated blind will use their motors only to tilt the slats, which seems to be a great cost effective way to get Luchon motorized Venetian blinds into our project. Manually pulling them up and down is very smooth and easy but also feel very solid and precise as you can position them exactly at any height you want. Now that I have my blinds fitted, powered and in place, let's see how to operate them and learn how to change some of their settings. The steps that we follow can be used by any installer or anyone that needs to assign picos to the blinds and to change some of the blind settings for example or if you want to use the Lutron wood blinds as standalone just the blinds with Pico remotes and nothing else the most common way to operate wireless Lutron wood blinds will be directly via this type of Lutron Pico remote with the wood blinds icons where the top button will bring the slats to the open position with the slats horizontal it is also called the view button next the bottom button which will take the slats to their closed position. It is also called the privacy button. Then we have the favorite button which will set the slats to a preset position. And finally we got the jog open and jog close which I like to call the tilt up and tilt down buttons to adjust the slats on the go to where we like. Very simple. So to assign my Pico to my blind I'm going to first tap the shade button here on my first blind. The shade button turns green. Next, on my Pico, I'm going to press and hold the privacy button, the close button. 
until the shade button on the Luton blind flashes green, which means that the assignment is complete. The Pico can now operate the blind on the left of my window. And I'm gonna do exactly the same thing for the blind on the right. Press the shade button to green, then press and hold the button button. The Pico is now assigned to both my blinds. Great! So, to quickly test my Pico and see how my blinds operate, Let's first press on the privacy button, the close button. Okay, now let's press on the view or the open button at the top. All right, let's press on the favorite button in the middle. Good, now let's press and hold a little bit on the tilt down button and then on the tilt up, a little bit at first, then all the way up. Okay, then again on the top button to bring the slats back to the view position. <laughs> Very cool. My blinds work and align very well straight away out of the box and I was very pleased with that. I have exaggerated the situation here but if for any reason you find yourself with your blinds unaligned or if you just want to adjust the view position, first you need to tap the shade button on the blind to turn green. Then, on the pico that is assigned to that blind, press and hold the view button at the top and tilt the button together until the shade button flashes green and then back to steady green. At that point, use the tilt up or tilt down button to adjust the blind as I'm doing here. Once you're okay with the position of the slats, Press and hold the view button at the top. The shade button will again flash green and then turn off to show that the adjustment is now complete. I first close my blinds and then press the view button to test it. Alright, my blinds view position is now aligned. Now, let's say that I want to adjust the close or privacy position here. You see? By default, those blinds close with the slats down. But just to make it obvious and illustrate the point here, let's say that we want the slats at the complete opposite position with the slats facing up, just as an example. Same thing here, first I'm going to press on the shade button on both blinds so I can make the adjustment on both blinds at the same time. Once they're green, I press and hold on the view and tilt up button together until the shade button flash and then return to on. Next, using the tilt buttons, I'll adjust my blind to the new closed privacy position I want. In this example here, using only the tilt up button to get the slats all the way up. And to finish, I will now press and hold the privacy button. Then the shade button will flash and turn off to show that this new adjustment is now complete. So let's test it. Press the view button. Now press the privacy button and I got my slats going to that new close position. Very good. I will now set the privacy position back to where it was by default. Now, to change the favorite slat position, it is even easier. You see, by default, I found the favorite position to block a bit too much light to my liking. To change that, I can simply adjust the position of the slats for my Pico using the tilt buttons. Voila. Then press and hold on the favorite button for 3 seconds until the shade buttons will flash green on my blinds. To test it, I go to the view position, then press favorite. And my blinds go now to my new favorite position. Brilliant. Now that my blinds are installed in setup, it is probably time to install my valence. This single valence that will cover both of my wood blinds has been sent to me in a different package. I chose an eastern valence as opposed to the Morgan valence and it is of the same red mahogany finish as my blinds. On the other side, we can find the channel that will be used to fit the valence clips. The valence clips will allow the valence to fit onto the valence brackets that are already fitted on the blind head rails. That bit here on the back will be used to lock the clip onto the valance. That bottom tab here will be used to release the valance. 
and that tab here at the top called the full release tab will be used to completely remove the valence. Alright so on the channel at the back of the valence I'm going to insert this first valence clip, slide it in in position and then rotate it 90 degrees to secure it in that slot. To adjust the position of the clip I can simply squeeze the tab on each side and slide the clip along the channel. We need to make sure the release tab is pointing down with the full release tab at the top. Each clip, four in total here in my case, should match the position of the valence brackets that are pre-installed on the head rails. To install the valence, slide it up so each clip slides up and around their respective valence bracket until it locks in place with a click. There we go. Now, let's say that you need to change the batteries. Locate the clips at the back of the valence, squeeze the release tab and slide the valence downwards. Once the batteries have been changed, I just need to slide the valence back up until it clicks into place. Very good. Now, to completely remove the valence, as we've done previously, I'm going to start by lowering the valence by squeezing the release tab below. Then once down, from the top of my valence, I'm going to locate the clips and this time, I'm going to squeeze the full release tabs to slide the valence down and off the brackets. Very easy. Those new Luchon Triathlon wood blinds are so cool to operate and also very flexible, I found. As you can see here, even if I have a blind and I have manually raised, its slats can still be operated from a Pico or from the Luchon app. So, if I need to, I can raise my wood blinds manually to any height and continue to use them in exactly the same way I used them when they were completely down. To me, this is very cool as I constantly need to manage the amount of light coming in my office based on what I'm working on. And this gives me even more options, convenience and ultimate flexibility. Let's just say that for some reason you like to reset the blinds. Something I like to do myself before assigning the wood blinds and the Pico to my Lutron Ratu Select system as I like to start fresh from the app. So to reset the Lutron Triathlon wood blind, I need first to tap the shade button three times and to hold it on the third tap until the button flashes green. Then immediately tap the button again three times until it flashes quickly again. It will then flash red and green to confirm the blind has now been reset to its factory default. And I will do the same thing to the other blind. After the reset, the blind should no longer respond to any picos. However, their view and privacy position won't change, which is good, especially if you had to modify them during the installation process. <laughs> voilà, there you have it. How to install the new Luchon Sivoya QS Triathlon wood blind. I hope you find this tutorial useful and if you have any question, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, remember to check out part 2 where we'll integrate those wireless wood blinds with Lutron right to select. So don't forget to like and subscribe to the Adelux YouTube channel so you can be updated when the next video is released. Thank you very much. Good luck and talk to you again on the next tutorial.